Howdy y'all, Dean Satilli here from the official home on official Grateful Dead and Music News reporting on uh, Dead & Company's summer tour, night four. The band was in Philly, so was I. Uh, this was a great time to be had by all. Uh, so we just had a blast, glad I made the trip. Uh, so we got a new spot in the room here to do these reviews. I think it's gonna work out a little bit better. I don't have that light over me like I'm being interrogated by the police. That's always a plus, so I'm not sure you care, nor should you. Uh, let's just get on with it. As we roll into Philly, so many memories in Philly. The band has been very good to Philadelphia over the years. It's, it's, it's starting uh, it's, my memories, 86, one song out of space, the do, boom, uh, that's all it took. Uh, and that's a roaster. Check that one out if you haven't already or if you're new to the music. Uh, 7, 7, 89, summer 89, I've talked about it before. That was my first complete tour I did from coast to coast. And a uh, ground scored one ticket to every night on the tour through Cal Expo. Uh, was in the parking lot going in. Uh, that was a hell of a ground score, probably my best one ever. Uh, and that was great. That was the first time I think as uh, I ever had tickets in advance for anything. As, uh, anyway, I wish the Greeks were in there. They weren't. Just the one through. So I had all the Cal Expos. That was good. Anyway, uh, what a great tour. That was the music that night was unbelievable. Uh, you got uh, came back in the fall. You got a California earthquake, and uh, it was just some great songs there. So that fall tour. So I had this 1976 lime green Scirocco. It, it was giving me nothing but problems, uh, electrical problems, hard time starting. As I got into uh, as the last show of the fall tour, I think the next shows were in North Carolina. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I think maybe it was North Carolina or something. Uh, get in the car after the show, car won't start, problems. I, I'm, I'm not in the headspace to deal with it. I, I take my bag with my clothes and my, my little container of tapes, you know, my little suitcase of tapes. It's a thumbs out, I hitch a ride to North Carolina. Car stays in Philly, I move on with the tour. Uh, that's what it's like when you're 19. Those were the days. It's all gone so fast. This was an extremely reflective period. And that you get in 95, you get the bust out of a uh, unbroken chain. So, uh, like I said, there's just a history of great things happening in Philadelphia. So, always meeting at the Rocky statue outside the spectrum. So, anyway, let's get on with what's happening in 2021. It's a much different environment. Uh, so anyway, we walk into the, the stadium there. I roamed around a little bit, spent some time, a little bit of time towards the front, a little bit of most of the show, back of the floor by the soundboard I hung out. So a little bit more room. I liked that I was spaced out, had more room. I, I appreciated that. Uh, I really wasn't into a mashup up front or anything. I, said, I will go up there and wave to everybody a little bit, but uh, spent the night towards the back of the floor. I, I loved it. It's a very different experience. You know, when you're there, as opposed to, I th actually think I, I'm able to be way more focused on how the music's being played when I'm home because it's a singular focus without a whole lot of distractions. It's not about all the people around me and it's not about the environment. So it's, those can either add or subtract from any experience. You're sitting by a bunch of yappers that can detract from it. And sometimes you're in sections with just a ton of people that understand the music. You could tell just by way of their energy and vibration that uh, there's good things happening in them and through them. And it's, you know, it's, they can, all these things, staff at the venue, weather, they can all add or subtract from the experience. And uh, so I think it's a, it's a more controlled environment. When I'm home, I'm singularly focused. And as I'm focused as good as I can, I really, when I'm there, I, my eyes are closed most of the time. I came home, I had to watch the show uh, again yesterday, especially the do, like I, I wasn't watching it. My eyes were closed through the whole thing. So uh, most of the time when I'm there and I'm dancing, I'm having a blast, I'm looking at the entirety of the event and the stadium and the things around, I'm taking it all in. And uh, here when I'm home, I'm just, it's one focus, it's a controlled environment. Anyway, let's get it started. Uh, they started off with half step. We got a light rain falling. Uh, on the stream through the lights, it looked like it was pouring. It really wasn't. It was kind of a refreshing light rain uh, that fell throughout the evening. So Alabama Getaway, as, as those two came up and uh, with Jack Straw, the intro to Jack Straw, I thought was weather report. They started with that intro. It sounded like it might be weather report, probably. 
uh, so it probably would have been a great choice. It, it wasn't. It was Jack Straw. It turned into Jack Straw. And at that point, as the big double rainbow starts forming right and right before our eyes. Boom! Double rainbow as uh, the Grateful Dead and Dead and Company and all things dead. As a rainbow has been following us around for a long, long time. And that was a great experience. Everybody taken in by that. I so taken in by the rainbow, I don't think they noticed that Jack Straw got a little pick-me-up. Uh, uh, that, well, that one picked up some some pace. There might have been a straw up Jack's nose because that thing was moving along just fine. I said, woohoo, giddy up. Let's get Jack Straw moving. After that, you get Franklin's there you go sex without foreplay you got no help slip just franklin's boom we're in which is something you go from uh, uh, uh kind of just chilling to full-blown flailing uh, it's a, that's a hoedown that's uh it's fine with me i love franklin's that one gives the entire place a chance to just celebrate life and we were high stepping it through franklin's that was outstanding estimated up next we're gonna have like this uh, it's gonna, gonna be a mashup of a set because apparently the forecast uh, saying we may get some severe weather so let's get this uh, thing underway uh, get everybody to their cars and home safely uh, we're just gonna do one set was, was, I remember Camden a couple years ago they were getting ready to take off uh, the other one was just furious and boom they shut that thing down and just the show was done just like that so uh, glad we didn't have that happen again uh, the Philly area down there South Jersey Philly area hadn't had great luck with weather the past few uh, runs through a anyway estimated it was funny as I, I came home I watched this one on the stream the for first half of estimated was sloppy and messy and lyrically messed up uh, no big deal the second half they caught up and it did some very interesting things as the jams on that were very good sugary uh, coming right after that this is a pretty strong song selection throughout the first set sugary uh, John listen when when a, when a lady's a keeper you take your time on it and John takes his time on sugary he knows she's a keeper and he takes his time getting to that one when he finally gets to it uh, he hits it out of the park that was a great time always is sugary is a very good tune on these guys they killed it terrapin's up next terrapin uh, uh terrapin w did what terrapin did tell the t tremendous story and we all sat there feeling it and living it and loving it uh, some interesting jams happening through that you get the other one up next uh, the other one is really because uh, the way that this is set up the taking some different times and liberties on the songs. It's the other one. I noticed during the other one, Oteal throughout the night was very low in the mix. And when I came home and I listened to the stream, he was pretty low on the stream too, even with my, you know, my ability to bump up the subwoofer, uh, you know, all the lows pretty significantly here with my sub. Uh, still was kind of uh, pretty low in the mix. That intro really didn't hit very hard as uh, he was kind of turned down pretty low. Uh, so they found some very interesting things to do with the other one. They uh, some different avenues were explored during that one. At some points, it got tribal. I swear, I thought I was gonna get done with that song and have a plate in my lip and a bone through my nose and uh, maybe some rings to extend my neck. I was gonna do all that national tribal, national geographic shit. So I had a tribal time during the other one. Uh, we were dancing our hearts out. Uh, so drums and space comes up next, and that's fine. I said, during space, you're thinking, well, this is a pretty predictable call. Should be the wheel or something. It's hard rain Saturday night. And uh, I said, I'm glad they, they didn't take the predictable route. They, they give us the wheel. It's the wheel. Now, here's one of those experience home versus there. The wheel is it's going. We're reporting a Guinness Book of World Records. We may have the slowest song ever recorded, ever played in human history. We might have it. And they're going to analyze the, uh, uh, the algorithms later and see if it was actually the slowest song ever played. <laughs> and... Uh, I came home and I listened to it, and it was a, it seemed a lot more interesting when I listened to it the second time. When we were there, we were having so much fun because all of us were trying to dance as slow as we could. 
to, to sync up with how the song was moving we were trying to be like jellyfish in the ocean and, and it was making us all happy and laugh and we were enjoying it nonetheless so I, we had such a good time during the song it really it didn't even matter how they played it it was just fun for us and then after that they fire off the notes to the do and everybody that has been following me for any length of time that's my that's my number one jam right there and the do for me was just filled with emotions from the first note it always is this was a very special time and just each verse like just with everything was speaking into my life and through my life and a lot of my life's decisions are filtered through our songbook when I think about things uh, I'll have an idea or something that I'm grappling with or thinking about and as I put that in my mind if I have questions and then a lot of times I filter those questions through the songbook of the Grateful Dead I listen to some stuff and so I get clarity in, in things and that to me is what this songbook has kind of done throughout my life has given me a filter to run a lot of my thoughts through and they come out on the other end making more sense than uh, when they went in sometimes sometimes uh, maybe they go in uh, they're completely confusing clusterfucks on the way out but hey, that's the chance you're taking anyway let's get to the do because it was amazing so many things I thought about in life as this do played uh, you know I thought I heard a baby cry and I'm thinking I'm sitting here and I'm thinking so you didn't hear no baby cry this morning and I'm thinking about how fast my kids are growing up how, how uh, my life used to be so full of uh, babies crying and stuff like this for so many years and and now it's just gone like that you know it's uh, it's just all these things I was just thinking about life and how fast life travels and how you try to take a moment like this to to just completely re release your emotions and everything that's contained in there to to the song and enjoy the moment and be in the now and so there we go where have all the people gone oh my goodness so as I told those stories and memories of Philly you kind of have those memories of all the people that you shared those moments with and so where have all the people gone and it's just the whole thing the cumulative experience was incredibly emotional and uh, it was moving uh, to get to the jam and uh, the jam at the end is a move over shoreline 2019 move over Oregon uh, top spot for me on dues goes to Philly 2021 I mean uh, the jam at the end of that was an absolute roaster and it was an absolute roaster because of Weir uh, I like to bust Weir's chops a lot and I think for a lot of deadheads it's been a pastime over the years uh, busting Weir's chops a little bit. used to have shirts that said Weir fans are people too as I've still see, I've seen some of them still uh, out and about but you know that jam was great because we're he holds the reins and a couple times of those end jams uh, they kind of were like making the break for him to I guess it doesn't matter they were making the break for it and he wasn't going to the microphone he was staying in the jam he giddy up let's keep moving this thing let's keep doing it uh, Bob Weir made that do amazing he holds the reins and he let it go and let John go on that and then John took the opportunity and just went to outer space with that thing that thing reached so deep into my heart and I was ch a changed human after that and that was the most consistent thing when I watched the stream versus being there lives the do was every bit as good uh, uh, both times there it was it was unchanged it, it was that good that was just an incredible experience kind of wiped away anything that might have fallen short up to that point which I don't think much did but after that it didn't matter anyway uh, just absolutely killed that one and, and this all started when Mrs. Weir came in and brushed Bob's hair. Do you understand that? So uh, if you want to thank somebody for uh, the most amazing do possibly that this band has ever played, thank Mrs. Weir. Uh, so there you go. There's that. Uh, and that thing. What a great, great moment.
the encore we get the first encore we get Saturday night you saw that one coming and then you get broke down and so there we are broke down and once again all these memories from Philly and from tour and broke down being sung and so my first show in 85 they encored with broke down now, I remember as, as I was listening to him sing it you know it's a far gone lullaby my first show my first couple shows that I got broke downs I used to think Garcia was saying it's a fucking lullaby. It's a, it's a far gone lullaby. I thought he was saying it's a fucking lullaby. And as someone from Jersey, I, well, that's pretty good. It's a fucking lullaby. <laughs> that's how far I naturally found out before long. It wasn't a fucking lullaby. It was a far gone lullaby. Anyway, there's these funny things that I remember throughout the course of this. And mama, mama, many worlds I've come since I first left home. And I thought about all those moments. Uh, throughout life uh, and how many times I've had this experience in stadiums all over the country uh, taking this in and being part of this thing and it's been 30 something years of doing this thing wow it's, it's for the band 50 something years for those guys it's just uh, what an incredibly emotional time but what an incredibly emotional show and I came out of it a changed human like I felt stronger on the inside you know I got to really clear out some of the chatter in there and you know so Lord knows the world is so full of extraneous chatter nowadays and nonsense and bullshit and and it was a great opportunity to just get rid of some of the static and I felt like I left there a clear vessel so that's what taking this thing's all about that's why I bought I get the ticket I see the show I actually got miracled Heather thank you for the ticket I appreciate it as thanks for the tickets I, she gave me two head my friend Heather she gave me send me two tickets so I couldn't even give the other one away there was tickets everywhere as the tickets were not a problem they were pretty much free if you showed up and uh, so uh, there it is night four was a doozy uh, I came out of it a better human I'm certain I love you forever and uh, have fun at Woodstock Woohoo!